Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. I'm trying to squeeze a Watch and Learn episode here into the schedule. Uh, the past couple of videos have been promotional, obviously, for the big shopping weekend. You know, not, not just here in America, you know, Thanksgiving time, but I would say pretty much worldwide. Uh, so after all that weekend madness is kind of coming to a close, I figured we would shoot a, uh, a watch and learn. So today we're going to be talking about moon phase watches. And I'm wearing, well, not a moon phase, the Orient Sun and Moon. And I think this causes a lot of confusion, so that's why I'm wearing it. And I'm also wearing a moon phase watch. It's my Yes Cosmos. I do not own an analog or mechanical uh, moon phase watch. So moon phase watches do exactly what they say. They tell the phase of the moon. But I think sometimes people get confused, especially with a sun and moon watch versus a true moon phase watch. The phase of the moon repeats, you know, around about once a month or so, right? We see a full moon roughly once every 29 and a half or 30 days. So what a moon phase watch will do is it will show you the exact phase of the moon, whether it's a crescent moon, a half moon, gibbous, whatever, you know, all those terms are from earth science back in, uh, in middle school. Uh, so the moon phase watch at a glance tells you, okay, the moon is, you know, three quarters full or it's a new moon tonight. It's totally black. We can't see it. So the moon phase display changes slowly, extremely slowly. I mean, they advance usually once a day, of course, but they're going from no moon, meaning a new moon, to a full moon, 100%, uh, in 14 and change days. So it's only really going, what, 5 7% a day? So if you look at the same thing, you know, from day to day, you may not see the gradual change. And I think this is where people get confused. And I recently had a customer that sent his watch back. He said the moon phase, moon phase wasn't working. And indeed it was. It's just from day to day, you don't see the gradual changes. But if you look at it from one week to the next, or if you know now and three days from now, uh, you'll certainly notice that the moon phases are changing. So moon phase complications are kind of hard to implement in a watch. And I say, I say that meaning hard to implement in an accurate format. Uh, I'll show you a watch that's relatively inexpensive, a mechanical one that does moon phase, but it's going to be off by a day, like every two months or so. Um, you know, maybe that's okay for you. Obviously, you know, maybe you have to change the calendar anyway, because it's, you know, the months change. Um, but making a moon phase accurate, and that's what a lot of you watch guys are after, is accuracy. Making it accurate is very difficult. And why is it difficult? Well, it's difficult because of the period of the phases of the moon. So, you know, I'll try to draw a mental picture for you. Um, you can go online and look at this stuff. It's all over the place. So obviously the earth is revolving around the sun and we have the moon revolving around us. The moon revolves around the earth about every 27 and a half days, more or less. Now that is with a fixed reference to the stars. But because phases of the moon depend on the sun, the earth, and the moon, you know, because uh, we, are, we, we are basically seeing which part of the moon is, is lit up by the sun, uh, the phases of the moon for us repeat every 29.53 blah, blah, blah days. And it's all that blah, blah, blah stuff that makes it extremely hard to be accurate. So, you know, most modern watches will use a 59 tooth gear. And every day that gear will advance one notch. Uh, there's two moons on the display. And, you know, what it works out to is that it's going to be off by one day in accuracy around every two and a half years, which is probably acceptable. And then taking that a level further, you know, a lot of brands have high end brands, I should say, have come out with, you know, complicated gear trains to make it accurate to tens and thousands and higher years, which obviously doesn't matter. But, you know, more affordable ones are using gears you know, gears with between one and 200 teeth, and they do the math and they work out to be decent uh, for much longer than two years, you know, maybe a couple of decades or so. So we don't have to worry about correcting them, you know, at least, you know, I'm sure within decades, the watch will stop, you know, it's a mechanical, <laughs> you're gonna have to adjust something at some point. Uh, 
So, but that is why moon phases, moon phase watches are so hard to make accurate. It's be just because that 29.53, blah, 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 there's a lot of decimal, you know, it goes on forever, uh, is just not an accurate, you know, not a, a nice even number. You know, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, all that works very well. But once you get into, you know, fractions, it's very difficult to make, uh, to make ends meet, so to speak. So now that we know why it's kind of hard to make the phases of the moon on a watch accurate, you know, for a prolonged period of time, let's just briefly, and again, this is all, you know, astronomy or whatever you want to call it, you know, what causes the phases of the moon? Well, like I said, the moon's revolving around the earth. The moon is tidal locked when it revolves, it does, the moon is not revol is not rotating on its own. We always see the same face of the moon. The dark side of the moon, as we call it, the part facing away from us does get lit up uh, by the sun. We just can't see it. Uh, but when we see the moon's phase, all we're seeing is sunlight falling on the moon. And as we see it from earth, it's very hard to conceptualize or visualize like I said go online there's tons of graphics out there and, and it makes perfect sense when the moon is in between the earth and the sun uh, we don't see anything because it's the for us the back side of the moon is fully lit up all we see is the dark dark side but it's not our dark side not what I told I talked about before it's the side of the moon that's not lit up and we really don't see anything. I mean, we may see some light reflected from Earth, but the moon is not lit up at all. Uh, and then, you know, about two weeks later, when the moon is now behind the Earth, so sun's here, um, the Earth, the moon's back here, uh, the sun is hitting the moon fully, and we can see a full disk, which is a, a full half hemisphere, a full sphere, hemisphere of the moon is lit up, and we just see a circle. And that's a full moon. Now, why... Doesn't the Earth's shadow always, you know, block the moon? You, again, you have to look at it in spatial terms. The moon revolves, revolves around the Earth at, a, at an inclined angle. So it, the, the Earth is out of the way most of the time. Uh, when it's not out of the way, we have those lunar eclipses. Um, and then when it's the other way, uh, we have solar eclipses. And, but those are, are, are much rarer. Anyway, I think that's enough talking. Uh, let's head on over to the table. I'm going to show you one, two... I think four or five different moon phase watches, and one of them in particular, uh, a Graf Zeppelin moon phase. I'm going to actually show you how to set it because I think that that is um, <laughs> it's a watch to learn in and of itself. But uh, we'll show you how to set it too. So let, let's check them out. So I have laid out in front of you here five watches. Four of them are moon phase. One is an imposter, and the imposter, of course is the Orient. So what I'm going to do is I'll pick up each one and show them to you. I'm going to start with the Orient just so we can get out of the way and uh, and move on to true moon phase watches, you know, just to get rid of some of the confusion. So this watch is called the Orient Sun and Moon, um, not a moon phase. And if you look in this upper left hand window here, I think you've seen me do this watch plenty of times. It's showing a big sun and then at night time when I advance the time, I get a moon coming up. So this is not a moon phase because it's not showing the phases of the moon. It's just showing you it's nighttime. It's really just an AM PM indicator. The moon phases don't change on a 12 hour or 24 hour cycle. Like I said before, they uh, repeat themselves around 29, every 29 and a half days. So uh, let's get into true moon phase watches. So I figure let's start simple. This is the Red Star Moon Phase Chronograph. It is a mechanical chronograph. I think you guys saw me uh, pick these up in Basel. Uh, I brought them in. They're awesome watches. Check out check out the movement. I mean, it looks just it's a, it's like an ST19 movement, but it's got a built-in or an additional complication for the moon phase. And there is the moon down there. And you can see right now the moon is just about full, maybe one day past full. And it's occluded by these two hemispherical cutouts, uh, negative cutouts, if you will, in the dial. And what those do is those make the shape of the moon when the moon disappears behind them. So this one's inexpensive, 300 bucks or so. Um, but the moon is not extremely accurate. It runs on like a 30-day cycle. So if I were to advance the time 30 days, I'd have the moon back exactly where it is right now. 
And as I said before, whoops, as I said before, uh, we're on 29 and a half day cycles. So every two months or so, it's going to be off by a day. And at that point, you'd have to do a quick adjust for the moon uh, moon phase set. And I guess knowing that the watch also has a date indicator at the top, uh, you have to adjust the date anyway, you know, every other month or so. So probably not the end of the world. But I want to show you on the side of the case is a hidden button right here. And when you depress that, this moon phase or the moon will move. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. To push that little button in, we need you know a, a sharp instrument to get in there. Um, I recommend using a pen rather than a watch tool, and because this is really sharp and it'll scratch. Whereas a pen, you know, is not. Uh, number one, dad is optional. Uh, you can use whatever pen works for you. But you're gonna put the tip of the pen in the button. There's a little detent, and you're gonna press. And as I index it, it's tough tough for me to keep everything still at the same time. But as I index, you could see the moon is leaving us, going behind that first cutout. And now this would be what we call new moon. There's no moon showing. And then one day later, let's let me find, find home again. One day later, the moon is starting to rise now behind that other window on this side. So the moon is setting and the moon is rising. Of course, the moon rises and sets. Uh, just like the sun does, rises in the east and sets in the west. But just based on speeds and stuff, it's uh, it's roughly about an hour or so off uh, because of the speed of the speed that it revolves around the Earth and everything else that's going on. It doesn't uh, it doesn't fall into sync with sunrise and sunset. So this is the Seagull uh, Moon Phase Chrono. Again, probably. The, not well, you know, as far as a mechanical, it's, you know, extremely inexpensive. Um, but just for, you know, for implementation of the moon phase, maybe it's the sim it's the simplest method that I've seen. And, you know, hey, it, it works to, to a certain degree. It just has to be uh, corrected a few times a year, which you're going to have to do anyway. Moving on, we come to a Stramansky, which uses a, a pole yacht movement, the 3-1... 310579 movement. And this is a mechanical moon phase movement. You can see the moon down there. It uses, let me get the hands out of the way. It uses the same principle, if you will, of showing the moon. They all use the same principle for the most part. You know, uh, moon rising, moon setting, um, behind the two little, you know, raised parts of the dial uh, in the moon phase display. But this one takes simplicity to a whole other level. Um, to set the moon phase on this, you basically advance the time manually until you get to the right moon phase. And then you go back and gradually change the time between 11, 8, 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. to set the date. And then you go ahead and set the time uh, because the moon phase doesn't advance until, you know, much later in the morning, maybe like 5 or 6 a.m. Anyway, so that's how this watch does it. This watch is a little over $1,000. It's kind of expensive. Um, I actually don't know the accuracy of the moon phase on this watch. I did not, I wasn't able to find it. It's not exactly published information. Um, but I got to imagine it's probably up there with, you know, the rest of them, you know, two and a half years or so. This is a, it's a mechanical hand wind. It's very nicely done. It's like nice stripes on the, on the movement. Cool looking watch. But it's a moon phase that I carry, so I wanted to uh, to show it to you. Now, on to a watch I don't carry, the one I was wearing in the beginning of the video. I've shown this in some other wrist checks. This is a Yes watch. Yes, Y-E-S. This is called the Cosmos. I'm pretty sure they still make watches. Uh, it came out years ago. I've, I've had this for many years. This, to me, is a super cool watch if you're not just a watch freak or a watch nerd, <laughs> but... Just a time freak, and you like all things temporal because it shows so much, it does it elegantly, and, you know, it's mostly useless information, and that's what people like me generally enjoy, things that, you know, are totally useless. <laughs> so let's start at the bottom of the dial, and that is the moon phase. So I'm getting my pen. Here, that's the moon phase display, that circle. So when you see dark lines, that's darkness or, you know, not lit up part. So the moon right now is roughly three quarters full. And that display will change every day. 
Now, I'm going to go into the other functions of the watch just because I think it's a cool watch. Um, it has nothing to do with moon phase, but it's cool. The way you set this watch, though, is basically you tell it where you are, Latin Lounge, or, or just for me, you know, New York City, because everybody's got New York City programmed in somewhere. Uh, you tell it Latin Lounge, day, date, month, time, and it sets everything. It sets the moon phase. Well, obviously, moon phase is not set on your Latin Lounge. It's set on, you know, day, date, year, and time. Uh, you set uh, it, it sets sunrise sunset moonrise moonset does a whole bunch of different stuff So let's just look at the watch quickly because I think it's worth a minute to see how it works So this needle here that you see pointing that is a 24-hour hand It's telling me it's almost 11 o'clock Digital display tells me it's 1055 we can turn this little digital display on and off it can show us different stuff second time zones whatever um, but just enjoying how the watch displays a lot of information. So this main part of the dial with all these black lines on it, this is telling you sunrise, sunset. So because we're in the non-black part of the dial right now, we are the sun is out. It's 11 o'clock in the morning or almost 11. The sun rose, though. You can see here where this black line starts. It rose around 7 o'clock, maybe a little before then, 6.50-something. The sun will set so depressing here when we're on regular eastern standard time the sun will set around 4 30. that's just super depression <laughs> sorry uh so sunrise sunset really cool and then on the outer ring you could see more lines here that's moonrise and moonset so the moon will rise today at around what 1 30. the moon will come out it will be about three quarters full and it will the moon will set uh, I don't know, around 12.45 or so uh, tonight. Uh, so the moon will rise and set, the sun will rise and set, gives all those times. I think it's a, a, a pretty cool watch. Um, this is a, a, a yes watch. Again, we don't sell them, um, just own one. I think they're pretty nifty. On to the last one, and arguably my favorite, um, you know, maybe not more than the sun and moon. <laughs> My favorite, though, for moon phase. I think this watch does it so well. This is a Graf Zeppelin uh, moon phase watch. Model number is 7036-3. comes like this. It comes in a gold case and a blue dial. It comes in a white dial, silver case, two tones, whatever. It comes in a lot of different uh, varieties. Uh, affordably priced, a few hundred dollars, um, 300 bucks, 350 or so. Uh, it does so much, it does a great job displaying it, and looks beautiful. I mean, look at that case, look at the case work. It's not a big watch at all. Again, no, this is watch and learn, we're not selling watches, but if you want to buy one, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, <laughs> the watch displays, I'm going to get, I get my pen pointy stick again. Obviously time and seconds. You'll see a crescent shape over here, hand, I can, can you see it? That is actually telling you the week of the year. Um, relevant piece of information? I don't know, not exactly. Um, but it tells it nonetheless, so it's what week number we are at of the year. Over here, I've got day of the week. Over here, I have date of the month. And down here, of course, I have the beautiful moon phase display. Uh, so again, the moon is about three quarters. Um, what I found with most Zeppelin watches is that the moon phase is set from the factory. In fact, this is probably set to German time, uh, 6 p.m. So yeah, seven hours ahead. Uh, you know, obviously depending on daylight savings and stuff. But yeah, they, they set these at the factory because setting them to the correct moon phase is a dog. To the point where when the battery goes, you want to replace it within a couple of days or else you're going to reset the moon phase. It's not the end of the world. It's just not the easiest task in the world. Um, and I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to show you how to set the moon phase on this. And that's kind of the other watch and learn portion of the video. I want to show you on this particular watch, because this uses, I, I believe, a Ronda uh, moon phase movement. I want to show you how to set the moon phase day, date, and time on it. Um, and especially because we sell it, and I know people ask all the time. So you buy the watch, and it comes with this tremendous leaflet, pamphlet, or whatever on instructions, of course, in a few different languages. And we focus on the Cal 706B, and it, it tells you how to do it. Um, and then when you look all the way on the right, all of a sudden it tells you all the full moon dates. And you may wonder why are they doing that, you know, out to 2020. And you do that to set the watch. And uh, it's nice that they include that because not... 
every brand does. Um, obviously, it's a Rhone de Manuel, but uh, it helps immensely when you're setting the watch. So let's get into that and, and see how to do it. So let's say you have your watch and the moon phase is wrong. Uh, the battery's been dead for weeks or whatever. So the first thing you got to do is pull the crown out to the second position. And that stops the time from running, and you have to advance the time manually until the moon is full. So we have to advance day after day until there's no quick set. There's no quick set for the moon here. There's a quick set over here. That's for something else. Um, and there's a pusher down here, but that's for something else too. We need to advance the time until the moon is full. So I will uh, use some editing uh, to get that done quicker. So we've advanced the time uh, manually, and now the moon is at the uh, the full moon position. The day, date, and time, everything's messed up. It's midnight. Uh, what we have to do now is set the day of the week to the last day of the full moon, and that's where the directions come in handy again. Uh, November 4th, 2017 was the last full moon, and that was a Saturday. So we just alternate between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. You can see the day of the week over here is advancing. There is no quick set day of the week. So we do this until we get um, to Saturday. It won't take long. We're at Friday and one more time. And now we're at midnight on Saturday. Advance it to 6 a.m. And now we're going to set it up to the 4th. So we go over here. We press this button. And see, this was the quick change. This has, has a quick change on it. We're doing this uh, pusher, the, this subdial, till it reads uh, the fourth. And what this means now is the watch is basically set to the day of the week and the date of the last full moon. So you can probably guess what's coming next. We have to advance the time manually until the date is today's date, which is the 28th. So we now need to go like this for a long time <laughs> again to get this all the way around to the 28th. It's truly the brute force method. We're setting the last known date and time of the full moon and then advancing the time from there and letting the watch mechanics take care of the moon phase. Uh, so for this again, we will be right back. So now we're done advancing and uh, I've now around 4, 4.30 a.m. It is Tuesday on the 28th. So now we have to set the correct time, which is now 11 something, it's like 11.20. And now, so what is set now? The day of the week, the date, the month, and all we have to do is do the week of the year, which is currently in between settings, which is fine. And luckily that requires nothing but a little push button here, and you push this a couple of times to advance it around to the correct setting. Um, I will say, well, you have to, I think you have to advance the time past be more like around 3 p.m. or so. Um, this one, you just need to figure out what week of the year you are in. There it goes. And you'd set that appropriately. And that will index again properly every year. I don't know what week of the year we're in. I'm going to assume that since it's the end of November, it's probably somewhere around week 47 or 48. So I'll take it up to now uh, let's go let's go to 46. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I'd have to look it up and figure it out. But that is how you set the moon phase. So now, oh, let me go backwards now to back to like around 11 20 something a.m. And now the watch is set with everything. Uh, what is interesting, I guess I didn't mention about the moon is that you can see the moon obviously always moves clockwise and it is currently waxing. So the moon is getting bigger. We'll have a full moon here in a few days, and then once it starts going more clockwise to the other cutout, uh, it will start to wane. It'll start to disappear. Um, so that's it. Pretty nifty. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, showing you how moon phase watches work and a little bit of uh, how to set it and what the phases of the moon mean. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.